You're listening to the worst show on the Potosphere. Din Steve, that gets my goat. Hey, kids, close the door, please. <laughs> hey, folks, this is Rich Outfield and Big Anklevich. Welcome. Uh, do you have some snappy Avengers Assemble thing you want to say? No. Okay. That's not my thing. Well, not mine either. Hey, folks, this is Rich Outfield and Big Anklevich. Welcome. This is That Gets My Goat. That's right. Our goat was so gotten this week. It was downright molested. Okay. <laughs> Wait, and, no, and, and if anybody knows anything about molesting goats, it is... Announcer man. But oh. the, uh, the Avengers came out for us just a couple of days ago. And I figured we better talk about it now while it's fresh and... Who knows where this conversation will end up? It it may be the middle of summer by the time we finish talking about the Avengers. Yeah, it'll be about the time the next movie that I want to see comes out, which is Brave. And that's the middle of June. So we got a while. And you know, that's fine. I think there is plenty to talk about with the Avengers. And when we first saw it afterward, I was just so anxious to talk to you about it in the parking <laughs> lot. And there have been times when we've talked for hours afterward. We've gone to Denny's or we've just stood in the parking lot and talked for hours. But now that we know we have a venue for it, a place to sit down and channel that excitement. That rage. Or rage into something <laughs> somewhat productive. We usually wait until Monday. But I still don't know if it would be better to just say very little, or to go on and on and on. For example, I did a blog post about the Avengers, mm-hmm. and I set my alarm for 15 minutes. And when that alarm went off, I would be done, because I just felt like, well, if Big and I are going to talk our heads off, I'm just going to say the least amount that I can. And, and you know what? I don't know that we've ever done a timer kind of thing with this show. <laughs> Have we? We should. Well, hopefully that's what people respond to, is that you never know. I mean, these guys may talk for an hour. Which we usually do. We have talked quite a bit. How many episodes do you think we've done talking about our anticipation for the Avengers? Wasn't the last episode of That Gets My Goat about anticipation for Avengers? Yeah, unfortunately. And and we hadn't been able to get together for a while. And then last week, we did an interview show for a couple right. hours. And there was a subject that I wanted to talk to you about, but we'll leave it for the episode that's this week. So yeah, Unfortunately, it's pre-Avengers and then post-Avengers and nothing in between. Unless you can think of something else we could record and put first. We could do a real quick thing about Battleship if you want okay. to. <laughs> Let's do that right now. Shoot, last week I wanted us to do a blog post where we just presented the idea and said, you know, if, if you think this is worth it, mention it in the comments and we'll see. You know, if people want us to do it, we'll do I'm it. I'm sure it's not hard. That's what she said. Hey, folks, this is Rochelle Field. And this is Big Anklevich. And we interrupt our regularly scheduled program for a an investment opportunity. The investment opportunity of a lifetime. I have one word for you. Plastics. I have two words for you. Plastic pants. Oh, perfect. Anyhow, do you want to just set this up for our vast audience at home? Sure, I will set it up. Okay, so the other day I was driving down the freeway and I went past the theater that Rish and I saw John Carter in. And they have a big sign at the front and it has like one of those electronic screens so it's changing the ad all the time, flashing something up. And it flashes up the ad for the D-Box seats. It's like, hey, this theater has D-Box. So all you D-Bags, come sit in the D-Box. Okay, when we actually went to see John Carter, we were waiting for the show to start because we got there like just too late to get into the showing that we were hoping for. I think it like sold out as we were standing in line. We were standing there. Really? A theater showing John Carter sold out? That doesn't sound plausible, does it? (laughs) The previews had already started or something. Yeah, it must have been that. But anyways... We got there like just too late. So we had to get one for like an hour from the time that we were getting there. And so like, oh, crap. So we sat around the theater for a while. And we went out and they had the little demo of the D-Box. And we sat in the D-Box chair. Okay, you keep using this word. I do not think it means. Wait, what does it mean? I don't what know is, what it means. What is a D-Box? It's for those- the box that you put the D-Bags in. <laughs> I really have no idea. That's just what they call it. Maybe it's you digital are our box? resident expert at debagging. <laughs> so okay, so we have three D theaters. We have IMAX theaters. We even have IMAX three D theaters. And this is the newest gimmick, which is some kind of yeah, was motion experience. That. Oh, okay. Well, you- yeah, I was saying we sat in the demos. 
basically it had a the two D box seats, and you sit in them, and then it had John Carter of Mars trailer playing, and you sit it and you go try the demo, and then it's like okay, and the seats actually they're motion seats like Rich was saying, they move around during the film, like as the John Carter of Mars spaceships were flying past, you know, you would like move forward or something like you're riding on the spaceship or whatever. And they had rumbly things in them so they would shake and they did all sorts of different things. And we thought, huh, I don't know about this D-Box thing. Well, see, yeah, I stood up and I was like, oh, hell no, Big Ankovich. Because <laughs> I was motion sick after three minutes. Now, granted... I think a real experience, a real movie would have like things matching what's on the screen or timed out or I don't know, because is it somebody's job to program this thing for the D-Box? I think so. I'm and sure somebody is in charge which of Which case, okay, whenever there's an explosion or a, an earthquake or whatever, the chair knows to rumble or shake and, and uh -huh. all that. But in this case... I, it felt like it was just at random, you know, whatever was going right, on in the screen didn't, really didn't have anything to do with. And plus, trailers are edited like entire Michael Bay films are. And so it couldn't keep up with when a ship was supposed to be turning and a ship was, you know, blowing up and all that stuff. It was right. just constant movement. Right. And I remembered when I w later was driving past and I saw the ad and I thought, you know, I remember one time and it may have been a that gets my goat and it may have been before we even started that. We were talking about 3D and complaining and stuff. And I mentioned going to the T2 3D. 3D experience thing that they had at Universal Studios where they had actual actors that came out and it was supposed to be like they were on the film and now, oh, here they are here and now, oh, they're back in the film. And they had like robots that would turn and like their arms would like point at you like they were going to blow you up and stuff. And the actors, I think they may have even like run up the aisles a little bit and stuff like that. And I was just thinking, you know, if they did a little bit more, it might be really interesting. You know, if you had like a, a heat lamp or something like that, when there's an explosion, the heat lamp would go poof and it would give you a pulse. And so you'd feel like a little bit of heat on your face for a second when there was fire and stuff like well, that. Like and your seats rumble. At and the end of that movie, they blow up the T1 million. And I remember <laughs> you get a huge whoosh of air. Yeah. And they had, it might have been like moisture or, you know, little sprays or whatever that was just like, you know, the pieces yeah. raining down on you. and Stuff like that. I, I remember that same trip we went to Disneyland and at Disneyland or Disney World, I guess it was not Disneyland because we were in Orlando. They had this thing called the Alien Extra Terrorrestrial Encounter. <laughs> and what it was, was you went into this room and there was a circle of chairs that went around this tube in the middle. You sit in and they have like shoulder things that go over you as though you're on a roller coaster, like you're strapped in like a roller coaster. And then they do this whole thing like, oh, we're bringing this alien in for you guys to be able to see. And they bring it in and then like something happens and like the glass shatters and the lights go off. And then they had things like you could feel the shoulder things would like press down on your shoulders for a second as though the alien was standing right over your shoulder. And like you would feel like a hot air blast over your shoulder it like it was breathing on you and all this stuff it was really cool and so i thought i wonder how d-box compares to that kind of ideal that i have so i thought you know it might be interesting as a subject for that gets my goat for rish and i to go and watch a movie in the d-box chair and talk about it after a couple of D-bags in the D-box. <laughs> and then afterwards, we could talk about it and do kind of a post-mortem. But I thought about that and I thought, well, shoot, usually we only go to see movies we want to see really bad ahead of time. You know, we're going to go see the Avengers and then talk about it. We're going to go see Brave and we're going to talk about it. But you don't want to go and experiment. And potentially ruin the movie. Yeah, with a movie that you want to see. So I thought maybe we should go see something else that... Uh, that we know. wouldn't ordinarily see without the D-Box. Right. Not one that we're going to rush out to. Maybe we'd see it. Maybe we wouldn't. Or maybe we just totally would do anything but. But with the D-Box, either it could make the experience better or worse or who knows what. But it would be... A, it would be memorable. Right. Way. And so you suggested... I said this was my idea? No, I just told you about the other idea. And you suggested we need to do a... Kickstarter? Yeah. 
Oh, okay. I, I thought you were saying that I suggested the title of the movie. And, oh. oh, geez, I don't know. Uh, I think I suggested it. I thought, yeah, maybe, maybe we should go see Battleship in the D box because that's one that we wouldn't care whether it was ruined or not. And that's something that I've been complaining about since they first announced that they were making a Battleship. And then since that first trailer that showed what the movie was going to be about, you've heard me complain endlessly about it. Every summer there's a movie that you couldn't drag me to, that wild horses couldn't drag me to, that wild horrors couldn't drag me to. This year, I, I think it's Battleship. It strikes like every single chord of things I hate. And there's this the new trailer that shows, you know, what the movie is about ostensibly. And it's mostly about explosions and right. really cool military weaponry and, and, and boo kind of terminology and Rihanna. <laughs> and uh, I was just like, wow, never, ever, ever. And you said, what if, what if we went and saw a battleship in D-Box? And after vomiting in the gutter for about three minutes straight... You said? Well, I'm sure I said hell no, Big Inklevich. <laughs> I think it was talking with J.M. Perkins on that other interview where he mentioned Kickstarter campaigns that we thought maybe we should do a Kickstarter. Can you really, you just became an enchanted with the idea of a Kickstarter campaign and you just keep trying to think of some way that we can do a Kickstarter for the Dune Steve. And so you said, man, maybe we should do a Kickstarter where well, if thought... people donate a certain amount of the, the money it would take to buy tickets at the yeah, D box, which question. maybe we ought to research and find out how much that is before we go any further. He said, if people donate a certain amount, then we will force ourselves <laughs> to watch Battleship. And not only will we watch it, but we will watch it in the D box chairs, which we're afraid may well ruin even a good movie. So, I don't want to take credit for this idea. I thought my idea was we put it out there that we will review any movie on That Gets My Goat for a particular dollar amount. And if you guys want to put me through the hell of watching Pride and Prejudice again or, you know, whatever it might be, it would be fun to say, oh, geez, somebody, you know, they paid for us to watch this and sit down and talk about it. But and, but this one, geez, I, I'm afraid. <laughs> that movie looks so bad. Now, granted, <laughs> if you're listening to this in the UK or someplace where people speak with romantic accents and are uncircumcised, you've already seen Battleship or you will know people who have seen it and you know whether it's good or bad. It opened overseas a month before it came out here. Right. Uh, well, it, it's an interesting idea. And the thing with Kickstarter is you set a goal a dollar sign, and if you don't get the donations, is it donations? What, what do you call it? The pledges? Yeah, I think they're like pledges or whatever. If you don't get enough pledges, you don't reach your goal, then nobody pays anything. And there's something kind of romantic to me about that. It's an all or nothing kind of thing. Because if it's just, you know, Big and I want $100 in donations this month. Well, if we only got $70, we'd still have $70. But it, there's something kind of neat about... Oh, we were three dollars short, so we got nothing. That's kind of the story of your life, though, right? Wah. Oh, serious? So right now you're looking to see how much it is. Yeah, just... <laughs> a D box seat costs sixteen seventy five plus convenience fee, one dollar per ticket. Oh, okay, seventeen seventy five. So we'll just say thirty six dollars. We need donated. Via this Kickstarter campaign. Holy cow. To uh, go and see Battleship in the D-Box. Now, wait a second. I mean, that doesn't pay for you driving up there. That doesn't pay for you taking time off or whatever you have to do to go. Because <laughs> you have basically one day a week that you can hang out with me. True. And this week we cheated because Avengers came out. So we got two, but... I'm so sure you want to charge a little should, extra? For maybe gas we should ask for more. Now, yeah, I have to drive forty-five minutes, nearly an hour, to get to this theater, and it doesn't matter because I have nothing better to do. But you have so many responsibilities. Holy monkey, dude! Sorry, it was my my mic was drooping. It's not all it was drooping. You have so many responsibilities. I don't know. I think we should make it. You want to make it even 40 or go higher, 45? Uh, okay. You know what? 40 is, is fair. I'm not going to be greedy 40? about it. Okay. But do you know how to make a Kickstarter campaign? 
I have no idea, but I don't think it can be that hard. That's what she said, Big Anklevich. Okay, I'm well, sure all you got to do is get on there. Do you want to look it up tomorrow, or should I email J.M. Perkins, or what should we do on that? I'm sure we can just look it up. Okay, but it. by the time this episode posts, we will know. We will. And we'll include a, a link to this sure. Kickstarter campaign. Now, when does Battleship come out? It's not Battleship this Friday, but it's the next. Friday, yeah, what next is that? Friday. The date of next Friday is the 18th. Yes, okay, the so 18th May, of May 18th is the deadline. Is that right? I don't think that has to be the deadline. We could give it an extra week if you want. Because it's not like you have to see it opening night. No, we don't have to see it opening night, but we want a deadline because that's True, how Kickstarter works. How long are you gonna? Is it gonna take to get the episode edited and posted? This one? Oh, I'll I'll do it tomorrow or the next day if you want. Okay, and then it'll take me like five days to get it posted. <laughs> yeah, I don't do that. <laughs> Let's give them to the end well, of the well, month. Well, we'll do a blog post that says the same thing. Okay. Let's. Or I say I, we give I can them to even... the thirty first though. The end of the month no, is the because... deadline. Look, if Battleship is a huge failure, and it will be, <laughs> but if it's a failure, I mean, we get movies, Dark Shadows, Battleship, Men in Black 3 oh, each Friday. True. And so Men there's only so many screens D-boxes. that can have D-Box. Yeah, because when I looked on here. If you click on that thing again, right now it's all Avengers, right? Yeah, when I looked on week, here, all they had was D-Box Avengers. Avengers. And that seems to be the only one. So yeah, it looks like we may have to see it the week of. Okay, so we'll say that it needs to be the 18th. That doesn't mean we'll go see it the 18th. Maybe we'll see it the 19th or the 21st. We'll see it on the Monday of recording or whatever. But just so we know that weekend, okay, next week we've got to see Battleship. All right. Once again, there is a link to that. And you don't have to pledge a lot. I I, I mean, I don't know how it works. But I imagine you can put a dollar on there. You can do three quarters of a pound on there. (laughs) Yeah, I, I don't know exactly how it works. Maybe that'll be something we learn when we look it up. But if you want to hear an episode about the D-Box experience, you want to hear two D-Bags talk about the D-Box. He's already got <laughs> a title in mind for that particular episode. <laughs> and here's the thing, folks. I do not want to see this movie. And so that should be incentive for you guys <laughs> to make me go see it. I, I it, when a I was in college, to punish Rich do you remember what it was sins. like? Well, you, you, I don't know. I mean, you in college weren't you, you were so easily manipulated. But if there was a girl that wanted to see something that I knew was going to be terrible and I knew it was going to be miserable through, I would suffer through it because a girl was involved. And that stuff doesn't happen anymore. I don't have to ever see anything I don't want to see. Uh-huh. And, and and that's another thing that, that the internet seems to thrive on. People would rather hear you complain about something than praise something. What was it that you said today? Promote what you love instead of bashing what you hate. So it's supposed to be an uplifting thing, but that's not what the internet is it's for. Totally not for that. If you take all of the positive reviews of the Star Wars prequels and set them aside the plinket anti-prequel reviews on Red Letter Media, there's going to be infinitely more views of just the plinket stuff. Partly because those are very well written and very funny and twisted. But also (laughs) because if you love something, you already know why you love it or whatever. And if you hate something... Oh, it feels so good to know that somebody else hates it for the same reasons or even more reasons. I I don't know. About the prequels, Plinkett found issue with things that I had no problem with. And there were a couple of things that I wished he had mentioned that I hate. Mm -hmm. And he didn't mention. And And that's the fun thing. things where I just know I don't like it, but he pinpointed why it wasn't any good. Okay, so we will cut it short, but... You you get the last word in this. Okay. Just because I keep saying, well, I don't want to see it. And if you want to punish me. Well, I also do not want to see it. Well, I don't know if I can quite say more than, than Rish. Because I think he has issue with even more things than I have issue you with. You have no Rihanna phobia. Rihanna's good looking. I doubt that she's a good actress. Because I don't think she's ever been in anything before this. But she's nice to look at at least. So I can't complain about that. I mean, we'll have to see how that goes but i'm pretty passionately against this film and i would never see it if it were not for the fact that somebody managed to get 40 dollars into this kickstarter thing because i really think that it's got to be the worst thing ever so 
who knows what we'll say. Maybe we'll go to it and be like one over completely like you were with that uh, Mission Impossible film or something like that. But Or you were with Rock'em Sock'em. Yeah, there you board. go. Yeah, and Rock'em Sock'em Robots was another board game made into a movie. So maybe it'll be a similar experience. A good movie. <laughs> we'll have to see what happens. Of course, if nobody donates, then nothing will happen and you'll never hear that episode. So it's all up to you. Either way, we thank you. Yes. <laughs> all right. Good night, everybody. See ya. What is this? Hey, everybody. This is Big Anklevich. This is kind of an addendum that we're adding on to the end of the episode. Oh, I, I know nothing about this. What's going on? Uh, well, it turns out, you know, you asked me um, whether I had looked into Kickstarter and I said that I would before the episode came out. Yeah, sure. Well, I looked into it and it's kind of a complicated thing and they want a whole lot of information like tax id numbers social security numbers bank account numbers etc 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 that i just don't want to do for a 40 dollar project if i was you know like one of those guys who was wanting to publish a whole book and wanted a hundred thousand dollars or whatever then you know it'd probably be worth it but for 40 dollars to go see a movie and do an episode about it i figured instead of going through all that rigmarole that we'll, we'll just use our regular donation method what do you do you think that'll be fine well i guess it would be fine but how will we know if they're donating because they want to punish me or if they're donating <laughs> because they loved uh boxed uh they're donating because they want to punish any anybody if anything happens it's because they want to punish you um, but I figured what we would do is just uh, if we get forty dollars in donations between now and the eighteenth that aren't uh, already scheduled donations, you know, like if it's a somebody's you know got a subscription and they five dollars comes out every month, then that one won't count because that isn't especially to punish Rish. Uh, but otherwise, we'll just say all the donations. If we get forty dollars worth of donations within that time then we will do that episode. And we'll make an announcement. We'll make a blog post. So it'll be kind of like a Kickstarter where you can see, uh, you know, whether your donation's paid off or not. Okay. I, and you'll take care of that or... Oh, I'm sorry. I forget who I'm talking to. Uh, so I will take care of that and... The blog post, you mean? <laughs> just having fun. <clears throat> <laughs> right. Exactly. So that's the way we're going to do it. And I'll we'll put a link to the donations uh, on this blog post instead of a link to a Kickstarter. Okay. And if anybody out there knows a way around all this Kickstarter crap so that it would be <laughs> as fun as it sounded when we heard about it, that it, that would be nice. Yeah. Maybe there's a, a another site out there that just does it in a simpler way. Or if they do it through PayPal, for example... That would make things a whole lot easier, I think. Because I don't we know. have an account already. And yeah. Right. Anyways, so that's uh, the addendum. Thanks for listening, and please punish Rish. That's right. I'm, I'm in too good of mood after seeing Avengers. <laughs> there you go. Bring me down. That's what he needs. That Gets My Go is produced under a Creative Commons okay. 3.0 license. Hold on a sec. I'm going to... Cat is sitting over there wanting to go outside, and since I'm sure you want it to, I'll let it out. Okay. Come here, Juno. Okay, okay, so I will provide some entertainment. I can't stand to fly. I'm not that naive. Man was meant to ride. She sits over there waiting for me to open the door, and then when I come over there to open the door, she tries to run for it like I'm going over there to kill her. I wish you would. Oh, that would be a cool blog post. I wish I could.